Hello, I am Lindsay from Lenny Penny Embroidery, and today I'm going to show you how native BX fonts work in your Embrilliance programs, and also go over some of the differences between a native BX font and a regular BX font. So BX fonts are super cool. They allow you to type your embroidery fonts as keyboard fonts. So I'm going to type out my lettering and there it is. Excellent. I've got this uh, sketchy BX font selected. We know this is a regular BX font because we see the little needle icon there next to it. So I'm going to make some quick adjustments to my lettering. And now I am going to create the same lettering, but with a native font. And so one other thing you'll notice is when we look at our list of fonts here, if it's not native, it has a needle, you'll see a different BX font for each size. But with the native font, you won't see the needle icon and you only have one. And that's because we can size this as needed without any distortion to the stitches. So I'll make some, whoops, wrong button. Make some quick adjustments to the lettering here. All right, looks good. So I think you can kind of see how the software is making these adjustments as I scale the font. Uh, this is a bean stitch outline. It runs um, five times and a sketchy fill. And I can move this and size it as needed and that doesn't become distorted. Let me show you. This is the regular BX font. Um, this is not native. So even though I can size it, uh, the software is just gonna do its best. So as you can see, when I size this up and down, it did not maintain the original spacing, the density that I set um, in the font. It spread the stitches out. Uh, it looks like it made the stitch length quite a bit longer. Um, see, the bean stitch is kind of a mess in places here. Um, it just doesn't look as good as this one up here. You can see there's, there's just no distortion. Um, these stitches maintain all of their original properties and their integrity as you size it up and down, which is great for a sketchy font like this because these are just notorious for not resizing well. So yeah, if we look here, you can see, I mean, this is supposed to be a bean stitch and the, the software did its best. We'll still stitch this out and take a look at, at how it looks, but um, compared to this up here, this is just much cleaner. Another really cool thing um, about the native BX fonts is this uh, nearest point. Um, you'll find this under the stitch tab. So let me show you. I think this is better with like a script font or something that connects. So uh, we'll use this chain stitch font. Okay. Very cool. And again, so see, we see the, the width of the chain stitch is going to stay the same. Did you see it recalculated the stitches um, so that it didn't stretch out that chain stitch too much? It stays the same size. So if we do a small, smaller lettering, it's not going to look as nice. Now, this one would look better with the skinny chain stitch. Let's see, it's a more narrow chain stitch. But we'll go back to the original. Make some adjustments to the spacing here. And then I'll show you how cool this nearest point setting is. Okay, so you don't see any jumps between these letters. And that's because that nearest point setting is on. If I take it off, wherever this letter ends, it's gonna jump and start the next letter. Same here, you can see where this one ends, this one starts. But with the nearest point on the native fonts, the software actually moves the starting and end point so that these will stitch without any jumps in between, which is very cool. Let's take a look at a different 
kind of font here. This one is a gradient fill. It's very cool looking, um, unique. The two colors fade into each other, and then we have an outline here. Um, so this is something unique. Right here I have my son's name spelled out. I typed it out over here on my keyboard, and I've selected uh, the native BX font from my drop down. So that means I can move my letters around. Oops. There we go. Wrong button. I can move my letters around as needed. I have these cool little font add ons so that I can move around and add a little pizzazz to this name design here I've made. Uh, and then up here, I've imported um, the same design, but it's, this is stitch based. So this would be just like importing your regular machine file format or even the same as a BX font that is not native, that is stitch based. Because remember, the BX font is just uh, the embroidery files um, mapped to the keyboard so you can type them out. But they're stitch based, uh, whereas this is object based. So if I want to resize this, check out how cool this is. There, the software recalculated the stitches for me. Um, so that cool faded look is not going to be distorted at all. I maintained all of the original settings um, that I put in place when I created this design. So this is very, very cool, especially because these type of designs tend to not resize well. No matter how off, uh, awesome your software is, um, they're, they're just complicated. It's not just a straight fill or a satin stitch. We've got some more unique elements here that tend to not resize well. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to resize it just a tiny bit. Oh, yeah. See, so we got some weird stray stitches. Um, the fill is broken up here. The outline is a little more feathered um, than it was intended to be. Yep, we've got some more stray stitches here. If I make it a little smaller... Um, same thing, we just have some distortion here with this file. We would have to use this at the size that it was digitized. Um, there isn't much room for editing, whereas over here, um, yeah, see, we can make these whatever size we need them to be. We have a lot of flexibility here. I set the limits on this when I create the font for you, so it won't let you make it so big that it's not going to stitch out well because this is a lot of fill stitch at the same angle. So um, if it's not stabilized well, you won't get a nice stitch out. Uh, so this isn't something that we want to stitch out at like eight inches tall. The same um, when we take it down a size, we don't want to make it too small since it has this cool gradient fill. If we make it any smaller, we won't see the fill. So you can take this down to about one inch and up to about three inches tall uh, and it's going to resize perfectly for you. Um, these cool little doodads are um, built into the BX files, so you can look at the guide that I include and see which keyboard button to press so that you can get these little bubbles, sparkles, um, whatever you want to call them. They just look really cool and add something fun to the design, and they are also fully scalable, so you can make them as big or small as you need within limits. So I hope you find this information helpful and you understand a little bit more about what the native fonts are. Uh, a great example would be um, speaking a foreign language. The native font speaks the same language as the Imbrilliance programs because it was created in Stitch Artist, which is an Imbrilliance program. So when you bring it into your um, Express free lettering tool or your enthusiasts or essentials, um, they understand each other and they work together well. Whereas up here, if you're bringing in a stitched based file, uh, this is Google Translate. Um, so it's not going to come out exactly as we intended. Yes, it's going to resize it, but it's not going to have the same settings um, that I've set it up to have when I digitized it. So yeah, big difference. Um, absolutely love the features of these native fonts. So let's come back to the sketchy font that I originally used as an example. Uh, here it is stitched out, so you can see on the top, we have a nice uh, sketchy fill and a bean stitch outline, which stitched out exactly as I digitized it. And then down here, um, this is the stitch-based 
file that I resized. So this would be either importing um, your machine format and resizing or using a BX font that is not native because those are just stitch files matched to keystrokes. So um, you can see here we do have some really long stitches um, both in the fill and around the outline. Um, some needle holes where this just went over itself so many times. You can see the needle holes in the, uh, the knit fabric right there. We don't have that one in the native file. So it doesn't look terrible. It's definitely usable. Uh, it's still a cute and unique looking font, but it just doesn't compare to having the ability to use the native file and it resizes perfectly with all of the original settings in place.